Now, dealing with complex rational expressions is the exact same thing as dealing with regular fractional complex expressions. Namely, we just have to sort of clean things up and, and let the fractions all fit together. I want to jump right to a, an example so you can really see this is nothing incredibly new. But there are some tricks to the trade here that you might sort of uh, want to think about. So this is a complex rational expression, right? Because it's fractions on top of fractions. There's variables. It's just a big old mess. 2 minus 2 over t divided by 2 plus 2 over t. You might want to think about inverting and multiplying, but you can't do that here because you only invert the whole bottom. So you have to get a common factor here and invert and multiply. There are two ways of dealing with this kind of thing. And let me talk to you about both of them really fast, and then I'll, I'll illustrate some of them. One way is to do exactly what I just advertised, namely, get a common denominator and make this as one fraction, one fraction, and then whoop, invert and multiply. Let's think about that for a second. And I'm going to do it for you really fast, just so you can sort of get the sense of this. If you were to work that out, uh, getting a common denominator here is multiply top and bottom by, by t. So this would be 2t over t. So I'd see 2t, and then I have the minus t, um, minus 2, all over t. That's the top. That's just the top there with a common denominator. You see how that's just a 2? Right? Because if I canceled, that's just 2. All divided by, do the same thing here. I would see 2t plus 2 all over t. And now you can happily invert and multiply. And if you do that, what would you see? You would see the following. You would see 2t minus 2 all over t times t over 2t plus 2. Now you can notice the common factor of t that could cancel out. And in fact, you can see I can multi pull out a factor of 2 here, which would give me a 2 times t minus 1, and a factor of 2 here, which would give me 2 times t plus 1. And then the 2s actually can cancel out. So it's sort of messy, but the bottom line is this thing equals, very simply, t minus 1 all divided by t plus 1. So this is one way of doing it, namely, just getting a common denominator here, combining this, making it one big fraction, making this one big fraction, and then inverting and multiplying. That will work. Another way to do the same problem, the same type of thing, is to look at this and try to clear the denominators off the top and bottom by a very clever choice of multiplying top and bottom by the same, namely by multiplying by 1. And notice that if I multiply this whole thing by t, that would clear the denominator. And the same t works here. So in fact, if I just multiply top and bottom here by t, so that's t over t, which doesn't change the value of anything, then what do I see? I got to distribute, right? Don't make a mistake. I'll make a classic mistake, in fact. I got to distribute that t everywhere. When I distribute that t here, I see 2t. When I distribute that t here, I see a cancellation. So I'm just left with minus 2. On the bottom, when I distribute, I see a 2t. And then here, I see a plus 2. I see the common factor of 2, as I saw before. 2 times t minus 1 divided by 2 times t plus 1. A little cancellation. And I'm left with the answer we got before, t minus 1 over t plus 1. Same answer. I think, actually, a little bit easier. Because I'd have to get common things and do things and combine and invert and multiply. Just had to find uh, a multiple that would sort of cancel out all the bottoms. So that's sort of another way of doing it. Let's take a look at another example just to illustrate the point. Suppose we have 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 minus 1 over x squared. Again, two methods to do this. I could get a common denominator here, multiplying the 1 top and bottom by x over x, multiplying this 1 top and bottom by x squared over x squared, getting one big fraction here, one big fraction here, whoop, and multiply. That will work. But let's think about this least common multiple thing. What's the smallest thing required for me to kill off all the denominators? Well, all I need here is an x. But here I actually need an x squared. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x squared. If I do that, x squared over x squared doesn't change the value of anything. That's just 1. But what do I get? When I distribute, I see x squared plus, and if I distribute x squared over x, it's just x. And on the bottom, what am I left with? I'm left with just an x squared 
minus, and then here I just have a 1 because they cancel. So that's certainly a fine answer, or if you really got into it, you realized I could factor all over the place here. Let's factor out the common factor of x on top, leaving with an x plus 1. And notice that the bottom is the difference of two perfect squares. See, factoring. Cool. And look, we can actually cancel away the x plus 1s. And so if someone said, I want this in lowest terms, this one probably cut it, I'd have to say x over x minus 1. And that's in lowest terms. So this complicated looking thing that we first saw turns out to be just little old x over x minus 1. Who would have guessed it? Anyway, let's try one last one here. In fact, I'll give you the opportunity to try this one. See, notice how I save the real hard ones for you. Why should I do it? 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x all divided by 1 over x. All right, give that a try and, um, and see how you make out.